Hello, and welcome back to Western Washington History. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. The Pacific Highway from the Canadian border at Blaine, Washington, to the Mexican border at Calexico, California, was completed in 1924. It's 1,687 miles long, the road held the record for the longest continuous stretch of paved road in the world. The name was officially changed to U.S. Highway 99 in 1927. It was an important road because the traffic coming into Tacoma from the south had to pass through there. As with most historic stories, there are varying renditions to every story. I have had to weed through them by relying on where the information came from as well as how often it was repeated. For a lot of these facts, I have relied heavily on the National Historic Places form. Yes, our subject today is safely on the historic register. Otis Button graduated from Washington State University in 1916 and was married the next day. His wife and him moved to Tacoma where he, along with his brother Reuben, opened Button Veterinarian Clinic at 2909 South M Street in Tacoma. That was a corner where Pacific Highway used to turn until it was straightened to what we know now. Otis Button bought property on Highway 99 in 1927 at the corner of Ferry Street. One account says for $10. The address is 2102 South Tacoma Way today. The next door neighbor was the Big Pump service station, called that because it was shaped to look like a gas pump. The restrooms were two giant terracotta looking flower pots, his and hers. On the other side of Ferry Street, where the school buses park now, was Smizer Display Service, built the same year Button bought the property. Otis wanted to open a diner. He wanted to catch some of the traffic going north and south on the longest road in the world. Some people say it was his neighbor on the left, some say his neighbor on the right, but most people say one of them told him to go with something unique. I would lean towards the guy with the giant gas station. Go big or go home, they say. We do know that his neighbor Bert Smizer designed it, and he and a guy named Carl Minch built it. It was built off-site. Where it was built is a mystery. One version of the story says it was built out on the Tide Flats in Tacoma. It could have also just been built next door at Burt's workshop. Either way, it was transported to the present site and bolted together in pieces. It sits on a concrete base, the walls are stucco, and the roof is asphalt. Burt Smizer was no stranger to design. He had designed displays for business windows as well as world fairs. He also redesigned the new exhibition hall or the indoor soccer place as we would now know it. He also designed and built the Century Ballroom in Fife and along with his wife designed their home in Puyallup called the House of Tomorrow, now the House of Yesterday, as FEMA decided it was in a floodplain and needed to be removed. The cost to relocate it was over a million dollars so it went to the landfill. Every time we lose an old building another hair falls from my head. It's not looking too good folks. So Bert and Carl got it built in 1929, and by 1930, the coffee pot restaurant was open. What a sight to behold for a weary traveler, a 25-foot-tall, 28-foot-around percolator-style coffee pot. This was in the days before the K-cup or the drip pot. Everyone knew what a percolator was, and I'm sure a lot of people stopped. I thought it was a teapot as a kid, and I always wanted to go inside. My parents, of course, told me it was a bar, but when it opened, I'm sure many kids got their parents to stop. They advertised their homemade pies and their percolator coffee. It sounds like Otis Button just had it built and then sold it or he leased it out because a man named Rufus T. Wright ran it until 1930 when William Baumgartner took over the business and he ran it until 1935 when he sold it to an unknown person. All of them were said to have lived in the apartment on the second floor. In 1940, a guy named Harold Elrod bought it. He had bigger plans, literally. He built the first addition, a 50 foot by 30 foot dance hall off of the back. He tripled the size of the kitchen and added booths for more diners to eat. Prohibition was over and he also applied for and received a liquor license. The name was then changed to Harold Elrod's Coffee Pot. His grand opening was April 20th, 1940. Flyer advertised Harry Lloyd's Hobby Horses. There was a craze going at the time where people would ride these wooden rocking horses. Harry Lloyd was a local actor who was on the scene for the festivities. Tacoma born, Spokane raised, Bing Crosby also visited while Harold Elrod owned the coffee pot. By 1945, Elrod had added a second floor to the addition and there was a couple of apartments up there at that time. Elrod owned the coffee pot until 1950. Ralph Brink bought it from someone in 1954 and called it Geneva's Tavern. 
He then sold it the next year, in 1955, to Bob and Lila Bell Radonich. Robert, or Bob Radonich, was born in 1918 in Tacoma. He joined the Navy and fought in World War II. Bob was no stranger to the restaurant bar business. His dad, James, and Uncle George opened and ran the Spar Restaurant Bar at 2123 North 30th in Tacoma, as well as the Tower Restaurant, which became Tower Lanes at 6805 6th Avenue in Tacoma. James was also a well-known bowler in Tacoma with many write-ups in the paper of his accomplishments. Bob married Lila Bell Jones in 1946. As far as I can tell, their daughter Danette, or Danny, was born later that year. I can find no proof of that fact, so that leaves Danny with room to deny this, because we all know that she's 25. The census of 1950 says Bob was a bartender. I would guess at one of his dad's bars, although I have found no proof of that. In 1953, a son they named Bobby Floyd was born. We can assume Bob continued to tend bar up until 1955. In 1955, Bob and Lila Bell bought Elrod's Coffee Pot. Little did the 26-year-old building know at that time that these were to be its long-term owners, finally. The story goes that Bob and Lila Bell were sitting in their newly purchased business and were playing Elrod's old jukebox when a song by the Ink Spots came on. The Ink Spots were formed in 1934 in Indianapolis. They are credited with helping to form the music style later called doo-wop. The song was called Java Jive. I love The Ink Spots version of the song came out in 1940 and made it to number 15 in the Billboard Top 100. The coffee pot had its new name, Bob's Java Jive. The word is that the same jukebox is still there today. They changed the bar to more of a live music venue, and in 1957 they added another addition to the west side of Elrod's edition and called it the Pool Room. The Pool Room had booths built in, pool tables, and a and a fireplace that incorporates an old Dodge windshield visor. Somewhere between 1958 and 1960, the instrumental surf sound band, The Ventures, a local Tacoma band, were hired at $40 a night. We worked at the Java Jive for, uh, I don't know how long, maybe a month, month and a half, something like that. Their song, Walk Don't Run, took off in 1960 and launched their career. At the same time frame, the band The Fabulous Whalers, also from Tacoma, were known to play there before their chart-smashing hit Louie Louie took off. In 1968, the back room was turned into the jungle room with a carved monkey on the door. There were fig trees and other plants scattered here and there. A lot of those were removed when the fire marshal closed them down in the early 2000s. The ceiling has not been painted in the jungle room since its conception. There are autographs and stars all over the ceiling. There are paintings and autographs and various writings all over the walls. Some of the original paintings were done by Bob himself. There is also an autograph of Ace Freely from the band Kiss. Also in 1968, the freeway Interstate 5 was opened and US Highway 99 was no longer a highway. The freeway came a loss of cars and a loss of business. The freeway cuts over the old highway just north of the Java Jive. At some point, daughter Danny would start dancing as a go-go dancer there, probably during the go-go craze of the mid-1960s through the early 1970s. Another go-go dancer there was Sylvia Eads, but she went by her stage name, Granny Go-Go. She started dancing at the Java Drive in 1967 and danced there her last time on her birthday, October 31st, 1996. She was a regular on stage with Tacoma band Girl Trouble. They even made a song about her and with her talking about her dancing. Oh, well, I, don't, I just uh, like all fast music. Uh, if it's slow music, I can't get with it. I fall over my feet. If it's slow stuff, it's got to be rock and roll music. They also gave her royalties that the song never made. Frontman Bon Henderson said after her death in December of 1996 that she had danced four hours on stage with them that prior April, then at the age of 85. She had traveled to New York and to Los Angeles and did many talk shows in the 1960s, then came back to Tacoma. She was born in Chehalis in 1910, orphaned by eight years old and sent to an aunt's to live in Canada, who put her into a foster home. She moved herself from there to Centralia. She lost her only son in 1962. She had a stroke two days later after his funeral. Her left side was paralyzed. The doctor told her 
If she didn't move her left side, she would lose movement forever. So she started to move and never stopped. At the nursing home, she had a tape of her favorite songs a friend made for her. They played it for her, and even while unconscious, she was moving her arms and legs and twisting. Beth Frick, a program director of a senior outreach program, said that Granny had told her she would keep dancing until she died, and I guess she did. Bob is quoted to have said, She was a great lady. I loved her. She lied to me. She told me she was going to live to be 100. Bob and Lila Bell's son, Bobby Floyd, would play the organ at the Java Jive for decades. He would take requests and play a lot of 1970s TV show themes, as well as high school fight songs and various covers of songs. It's hard to tell from the performance I saw and the interview with him how much is his act and how much is actually him. If it was an act, he did a great job. Either way, he was definitely a big part of the atmosphere in the years he played. Bobby, how are you doing? Pretty good. Could you tell us um, what keeps you going? What do you like about playing the music you do? Well, I like to entertain people. I like different kinds of music. Some I like more than others. Sometimes Steve and his sexy sticks would join in on the drums and sometimes sing the guitar parts of songs. In 1978, they added a parrot and mother and daughter monkeys named Java and Jive. They lived in a glass cage that had an outside enclosure as well. Apes and monkeys were no stranger on South Tacoma Way. B and I, I'm looking at you. The word is, the monkeys at the Java Jive would sometimes play the drums as Bobby Floyd played the piano. Lila Bell passed away in 1985 at the age of 69. I'm sure that made an impact on not only the family, but on the community of Java Jive as a whole. The next year, the monkeys were given to a family capable of caring for them in South Carolina in 1986. Nico Case, another Tacoma musician, tended bar there in the late 1980s. I'd never heard of her before this video. Then I listened to the song South Tacoma Away, and she has a very good voice. Up in the kitchen, a few minutes later, I didn't know how I had gotten there. Also in the late 1980s, it's said that Bob was asked to put a new band on stage. But when he heard them, he said he didn't want that loud music in his place. That loud music was the band Nirvana from Aberdeen. In 1989, Java Jive had a part in the movies Say Anything starring Cameron Crowe and the movie The Three Fugitive. Then again in 1990, Keanu Reeves played pool and drank at the bar talking to Bob in the movie I Love You to Death. They say he offered to buy the Java Jive building and ship it to Hawaii. He offered Bob one million dollars but he was turned down. There are Hall and James here. In the back, D Wolf. In 1995, Bob steps back from the bar and lets his daughter Danny take over the Java Jive. The next year, a fire destroys the top floor of the rear edition and it has to be removed. Another movie, 10 Things I Hate About You, had the Java Jive in it in 1999. Sadly, Bobby Floyd passed away in 2001 at 47 years old. They say he had multiple health problems. He was followed the next year by his dad, Bob, in September of 2002 at 83 years old. In 2014, Bob's Java Jive received landmark status. What we knew all along, Bob's Java Jive has been a landmark my whole life. Today, Danny's son, Rich Stats, has taken over Bob's Java Jive. He seems to honor his grandparents' memory. Here is a quote I found from him. To me, it's an honor, a privilege, and a duty. Really all rolled into one. It's good to know this building is in good hands. 2029, the old coffee pot will be 100 years old. I look forward to his birthday celebration and years more history. Go check them out. There's live music still as well as karaoke and live comedy nights. Check online for current operating times. They also have a Facebook group that advertises events that are happening all the time. If you made it this far, there are a couple extras I will put at the end for you fine people. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't and like the video if you liked it. Thank you for joining us on this trip, and remember, what you do today will be history tomorrow.